Hello, Cryptonauts. Welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Vic Jabarelli, with my co-host, Blockchain John and Cryptolissa. But we're going to head off to John here and see how his day has been. Or his week, I know he's been on Twitter Live. Yeah, we've been day. doing Twitter Live How's Spaces. Going, yeah, we've been doing Twitter Live Spaces like every single day now for uh, promoting Ravencoin for the Havening. Cryptolissa has been doing an awesome job co-hosting a lot of those spaces. Um, and it's actually been pumping a lot. Like there's been a lot more people participating, which is really exciting to be part of a community like that. Like you just see it continuously growing and, and more people are starting to pay attention to it. It's, it's, and it's all by like, vol nobody's getting paid to do this. We're all just volunteering. Right. Right. Lisa. Yep. No fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's exciting. It's energetic. And there's always like this, 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 uh, uh, like amazing, like high, like, you know, after you get off a roller coaster, you're just like so excited afterwards that's how it feels like after you end one of these one of these spaces so if you haven't checked out one of the spaces i highly recommend it it's super fun hanging out with people all right uh, let's see here disclaimer of the day this content is for entertainment entertainment purposes only any comments made by the host or guest is not financial advice all right jake back to you. this is not financial advice you can't sue us. We, we told you. We just claimed it. <laughs> Let me get on to getting started with the top 10 daily stats as well as the crypto news of the day. Here we go to CoinGecko with a quick refresh because the prices change constantly. Bitcoin is up a little bit. I'm trying to recover. Not a lot, but today 1% in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin holding the first position at $48,820.09. Seven-day loss of 3.3. It is climbing back up. And a market cap of $922 billion. Still short of that trillion, but it'll I'm sure it'll get back. In second place, Ethereum also climbing up in the last 24 hours, about 5%, to a price of $4,023.14. A market cap of... $477.8 billion. And uh, just as a comparison, we know we talk about dominance on a regular basis. Bitcoin is currently at 38.9% dominance of the market, and ETH is at 20.1%. They are, of course, the top two. The th third position is Binance Coin, a current price of $533.66, seven-day loss in the double digits of 11.8%, and a market cap of 89.7, just shy of $90 billion. Tether, which is, of course, a stable coin, so it doesn't really change much, is currently flat, as it should be, a market cap of $77.7 billion. Solana is currently, again, in still fifth place, 178.65, a seven-day loss of 8%, and a market cap of $55 billion even. USD coin, it slips up a bit, actually. Uh, it's just above Cardano at the moment in sixth place, at, of course, it's being a stable coin, it's at $1.00. Uh, no loss or gain in the last seven days, but a market cap of $41.7 billion. And like I said, it is narrowly above Cardano at this very moment. Cardano currently in seventh place at $1.30, a loss of 6.7% over the last week, and a 41.73 billion, billion dollar market cap. So it is so narrow. I mean, I realize the difference between the two of them is, uh, what is that, uh, Twenty billion dollars, mm -hmm. <laughs> but when we're talking about numbers that are close to a trillion, that's pretty narrow. So it's right there with USD coin and, and Cardano neck and neck. Just underneath that, in uh, eighth place is XRP or Ripple. It's currently at eighty-three cents, which is down quite a bit to uh, three three point four percent over the last week and a market cap of thirty-nine point two billion. Polkadot is in ninth place at twenty-six ninety-six, a almost double-digit loss of nine point six percent. And a market cap of $28.7 billion. And then finally, in 10th place, Avalanche, which has crawled up out of 12th place in the last mm -hmm. few days, to 104.59 or 59 cents, 12.5% uh, gain. I mean, nothing, even in the top 20 is that high. Mm -hmm. um, it's really making huge strides. And it is currently at 25.4 billion. Like I said before, the, the following five values: Dogecoin's 11th, Terra's 12th, which used to be 10th, Shiba is 13, Polygon is 14, and Binance USD is 15. So there, there's been a lot of movement around here. Crypto.com used to be in the top 14; it's dropped down quite a bit. But um, nothing has grown as much as i guess okb is just way down there at 25th place is close to the same amount of growth that avalanche has given you, you know what I? Noticed? avalanche is bounding up what's up you know what i noticed jake that the numbers here on coin gecko are pretty accurate 
unlike coin market cap oh yeah what's wrong with coin market cap? oh you haven't heard oh man oh no i know i'm just oh yeah. i know you i oh, want you man. to say it the what's numbers the numbers all whacked up everybody's numbers on there on on, on that particular statistics charts uh, on all the cryptos they're all whacked up everybody thinks that they're they're millionaires but nope 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 so my, my thing is you know it's been coin market cap has been wonky ever since uh cz aka binance has bought them out uh, are they manipulating numbers uh, technically that's manipulating numbers the thing is what's the end goal are they trying to obscure numbers to do some stuff behind the doors i don't know that's a conspiracy theory it's a possibility why not right you're your binance your cz let's go ahead and mess these numbers up real quick and do a bunch of bunch of uh backdoor trades and then reset the numbers back to normal i don't know it's conspiracy theory it's possible yeah. I mean, but MetaMask has the same problems. Every now and then I get on there and they, on the numbers, I actually posted this in the forums recently. Um, <laughs> it was showing all my other tokens as if they were ETH. Right. And so when I posted the value, it said it had $300,000. So, so here's, here's of, my question. Where, where does MetaMask pull the numbers from? Because they don't, don't do, know. They don't maybe do... it is, maybe it is coin market cap. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. But, I mean, they do correct it eventually, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it's like, I don't, I know I don't have that much cash. I'd like to have that much cash, but I don't have that much cash. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, our uh, total market cap volume currently on CoinGecko is two point three seven trillion dollars. Down, or actually up in the last twenty four hours of three point two percent, but down overall in the last uh, two weeks by about uh, half a billion or half a trillion rather. And if you haven't already, and I know John can't see mine, uh, collect your candies, CoinGecko's candies that you can collect every single day. And I've been very consistent with this late, lately, getting every single week all the way up to 100. I'm over 10,000. I'm actually 10,360 right now. And you can get rewards and discounts off of subscriptions, all kinds of different things. And every now and then, CoinGecko will drop an NFT. So make sure to continue to collect your, your candy so that you can get those cool NFTs and discounts whenever possible. After that, uh, we're going to go over to the news. That's, okay. And that news is on Decrypt as we always read from Decrypt, because uh, we trust Decrypt and they have awesome news and awesome writers. You wanna take the first one or shall I? Uh, go ahead. All right, so from Jason Nelson, the hardest part of building a DAO, centralized organization, uh, isn't what you think. So I'm just gonna read this like a, a Valley guy, but uh, you, want, <laughs> you want to start a DAO? Why not? All the kids, all the cool kids are doing it. Like blockchain and DeFi before it, DAOs have become a buzzword in the crypto industry. And they're raising money at a feverish clip. Constitution DAO raised just over $45 million in an attempt to buy a copy of the U.S. Constitution. More recently, Free Ross DAO raised $12 million to win the Ross Ulbricht NFT collection auction. The technical process of starting a DAO is not incredibly difficult. Draft a mission statement, spin up a Discord server, invite people to join, launch a governance token, use Snapshot and other tools for voting and logging member contributions. The hard part is scaling it. It's extremely easy to launch a DAO, said Eric Arsenal, head of the ecosystem of NFT marketplace Rarible and a core contributor to the Rarible DAO. The harder aspects are launching a DAO are forming the cultural norms, processes, and accountability tools that are essential for success. Having a committed group of contributors is essential. Oh, what is a DAO? Well, we've talked about this many times on the podcast, but let's reiterate just for this sake, since it's more explicit. Let's take a step back and anyone who's new to DAO land, DAOs are decentralized autonomous organizations online groups that use smart contracts to manage member participation, voting, funding, and more. While traditional corporate structures resemble a tower with a few select at the top and the majority of the middle and bottom, DAOs spread out like a net and give all members a say in the decision-making. The most famous and now infamous DAO, called The DAO, was built on Ethereum in 2016 and promptly became the victim of a massive hack, a 3.6 million ETH, worth around $50 million at the time. The DAO ended its run as after a hard fork of the Ethereum blockchain and resulted in Ethereum and Ethereum Classic becoming two distinct blockchains and effectively rolled back Ethereum chain before the DAO hack. Since then, DAOs have multiplied and matured. 
DAOs or DAOs enable people, groups, and businesses to organize and operate without a central authority, typically based around a token as the economic incentive. Pardon me, incentive, there's not an extra in there. There are NFT or non-fungible token investment DAOs, fashion DAOs, media DAOs, and even DAOs for curating tools to help other DAOs. <laughs> DAOs making DAOs. DAOs are rely heavily on community participation to grow and thrive. Without consistent member participation, a DAO dries up like a plant that needs water. API 3's community manager, who goes by Midhav on Twitter, says, stagnation is a significant challenge every DAO faces. Over time, interest tapers off along with the general sentiment around DeFi and oracles, Midhav said. This general trend was reflected around uh, across the country, uh, pardon me, across other community outreach programs and goes to show that no amount of proactive outreach efforts can keep people engaged when their attention spans are naturally attuned to the craziness of the rest of the industry. Think crypto Twitter. Indeed, while NFTs have won much of the mainstream media spotlight in 2021, DAOs have continued to build and grow. And the two topics often overlap. Many of the biggest DAOs focus on creating and acquiring NFTs. According to tracking website DAOList, there are now over 100 DAOs, most of them using the chat app Discord as their home base, by far the most popular social networking platform for organizing DAOs. The Discord server can support hundreds of channels with thousands of users assisted by programmable bots. DAOs use various channels to direct member questions, assign roles and tasks, host community events, building an online community, and share culture around the DAO itself. DAOs are like a cultural system of beliefs, said Super DAOs Yuri Lifshitz. Great name. Some, some will fulfill all of those beliefs and some will not. Lifshitz, I, I'm just, sorry, the Valley guy in me is laugh, laughing internally. Co founder of the Messenger app OpenLand launched Super DAO earlier this year and raised $1 million pre seed funding in October to, to go toward the Super DAO operating system. He believes DAO needs a template to simplify creation and organization. He calls SuperDAO an operating system for DAOs, including support for core apps, member updates, spending management, and 30 party apps. I was inspired by the potential of NFTs and DAO, if it said. I see a lot of comparisons because OpenLand, at its heart, is a platform for chat communities. DAOs are communities with shared bank accounts. They're basically next better versions of communities. Lifshitz predicts that as DAOs become more commonplace, we'll see the three primary organizational focus areas that evolve. The first of that is use of blockchain for storing basic facts like wallets containing tokens and smart contract information. The second is the ownership table, which records all people involved in the DAO and their roles. The third is the apps for services like payroll, bookkeeping, taxes, voting, bounty, and incentive programs. Emma Jane Mc McKinnon Lee, two hyphenated names of the same person, <laughs> One of the principles behind the global design network GDN, DAO, believes it's essential to represent the incentive members' contributions appropriately, having them work toward higher levels of responsibility and influence while keeping the DAO dynamic. There aren't any great tools that exist on the market that allow us to better automate this structure, McKinnon Lee said. So as we grow into the next 500 to 1,000 members, the manual process required are going to start taking a bigger toll in both time and coordination. Currently, DAOList says that the largest active DAO by assets under management is Uniswap at around 3.3 billion, over 83,000 members. McKinnon Lee says that even with bots, it still requires motivating members to interact with bots and effectively make updates, invite and onboard new members and organize voting and fundraising. Using smart contracts for voting is great, but getting members to actively engage with each other is even better. Arsenault of Rarible adds that forming a DAO on t in any top-down fashion is detrimental to its health. If members don't feel that they have enough of a voice, your vow will die. It was a very long article, and I apologize for having to go through the whole thing of it, but it is kind of a, a nice kind of coalescing of the concept of DAO. Yeah, it's been a while since we talked about DAOs in detail like this. First of all, we got to get, we got to, we got to talk about this name here. Life, life shits? Lift really? Shits. Really? Lift shits. Yeah. Life shits. Life shits. 
Yep. It's like a big yeah, he pile definitely, of. Uh, he definitely de is lifting poop. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what <laughs> it is, man. Raising, why raising would food. you? Why would you name your company that? It does Why? Oh no no no! It's a person. It's oh, not the, person. It's not the company. Oh no! I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's it's. I believe it's a. Uh, um, I believe, yeah, Yuri. It's it's just a foreign name, you know. It's, it just happens to sound bad in English. In his language, I'm sure it's not bad. So. Sorry, Mister Lifshitz. Okay, Dallas. Awesome. Let's go to the next one. All right. Let's see. This one's written by Jason Nelson, Birkin handbag. Birkin Birkin handbag creator. Hermes calls Meta Birkin NFTs trademark infringement. Mm. Hermes, the company behind the famous Birkin line of handbags, has spoken out against a collection of non-fungible tokens, Meta Birkins, calling them an infringement on Hermes trademark. Hermes did not authorize nor consent to the commercialization or creation of our Birkin bag by Mason Rothschilds in the Metaverse. A Hermes representative told the Financial Times, which first reported on the news on December 10th, these NFTs infringe upon the intellectual property and trademark rights of Hermes and are an example of fake Hermes products in the metaverse. A physical Birkin handbag can sell between $9,000 and $500,000 or more. In 2012, Auction House Sotheby's released a list of the top six most expensive Hermes Birkin bags, a diamond encrusted handbag. Sack, oh jeez, how do you say that? Sack Bijon Birkin was priced at two million dollars. Oof. Sack Bijou, Sack Bijou Birkin. Sack Bijou Birkin. The Meta Birkin's NFT collection on OpenSea is the work of the digital artist Mason Rothschild and features fox fur and colorful variants of the Birkin handbag. Meta Birkin's is the second. Birkin themed collection by Rothschild. The first called Baby Birkins also featured a play on the Birkin handbag and was created in collaboration with Eric Ramirez. And there it is. Beautiful. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? It is beautiful. <laughs> Come on, Lisa, weigh in on this. Tell us Come what you on. think. This is this is it. This is this is what's selling for a half a million dollars. Hundred this this right here, this image right here is 150 ETH. No? Okay. She's not there. Okay. All right. Sleeping on the job. Okay. No problem. OpenSea, the largest entity marketplace by volume, $13.25 billion, has hit with wait, wait, there's complaints something? about... Wait, weigh in on the picture. <laughs> Tell us what you think. I mean, we're, we don't typically carry handbags. I've, I've carried a briefcase before, but what do you think of this image? Can you see it? I mean, it's cute. Yeah. I okay. See it. Cute? Okay. How much would you pay for that? There's a, there's a lock. For there's a lock that. in the middle, so that that lock is has a lot of I, value. I, to it. I, I, um, no. It makes me think of a they turned a cat into a handbag. I don't know. That's what it looks like. It's a black cat. Somebody just ran over a black yeah. cat. I'm more of a Michael Kors. <laughs> Oh jeez! This this cost this image right it here. It does. It looks like somebody ran over a cat. <laughs> this is 150 ETH for oh, this. My. For this, it's, it's not even a real bag. bag. Jesus, yeah. that's insane. It's not the real. It's not. Don't do it, people. Just don't do it. <laughs> jeez. OpenSea, the largest NFT marketplace by volume, $13.25 billion, has hit with several complaints about counterfeit art on the site. Yes, please get rid of it. In an odd twist, Rothschilds made a similar complaint in an interview with Yahoo Finance upon discovering that his designs were being copied and sold. I hate that because they've done that to me. I know, I know the feeling. Before my collection dropped, there was a bunch of like and counterfeit NFTs that weren't from my collection, Rothschild told the site in December 6th interview, but we had like 35,000, 40,000 in volume of people buying fake versions of Meta Birkin. Hermes says the issues of Meta Birkins is that it could confuse customers and have them think that Merkin Bir Meta Birkins is <laughs> Meta Birkins is an official Hermes release when it is not. The other problem is the money. The, the Meta Birkins collection has ranked raked in 230 ETH, around $936,000 according to OpenSea. 
that is nearly one million dollars or one hundred thousand or excuse me or one hundred handbags Hermes won't see outside of the uh, won't see outside of taking legal action the growing popularity popularity of nfts has resulted in other copyright disputes last month decrypt reported that the film production copy Miramax company Miramax has sued Qu uh, Quentin Tarantino after the famed director announced a line of entities based on his 1994 classic pulp fiction Miramax alleged that Taran uh, T Tarantino doesn't have the rights to release the NFTs right he doesn't even though it's his movie that he made but he's just the you know that's why you that's why you director and that's why you do everything in the metaverse you, you do everything web 3 you make your films on web 3 this is the next step we're moving away from that thank god seriously yeah well um uh, yeah it's it's unfortunate that this is happening but this is something that's going to happen until there's some there's not really any regulation on this you know space but maybe a dow will become a regulating entity and be able to help out with that kind of thing so people are always going to i mean people obviously there are co copies of real physical objects out there that people can buy for you know 50 bucks instead of 2500 like these things you know gucci handbags and whatnot um and that that's illegal but i mean how do you stop it all the nice thing about this is we can see who bought it and who sold it right intellectual property so actually, rights is what we need in the, in the, in, the, in the metaverse and blockchain and web3 that's what we but need but we can actually see this like when there's sales going on you know back back market kind of sales stuff going on when it comes to fake rip yeah. off stuff that's not it's not an nft you can't see it cuz it's not out in public this is in public that was the thing I, I don't think these people realize is if you're selling this stuff it's fake we know who 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 created it and we know who sold it and who you know, who bought it mm -hmm. well, we know their addresses at least um so it's not the smartest thing like you know like copying to like yeah i stole it i'm on tv oh my goodness <laughs> continuing on with jeff john roberts the next billy eilish will emerge on web3 nft startup sound offers musicians a new model i think this is kind of cool a growing number of up-and-coming musicians are being discovered on tiktok and soundcloud uh, platforms that can help them go viral but that offer little but that offer little in the way of, I guess they missed the character offers little in the way of money to support their career. That's why a startup called Sound believes it can offer a superior way to promote and reward musicians using NFTs. On Wednesday, Sound announced it had raised five million dollars from Andreessen Horowitz and other firms, angel investors and entertainment including Holly Hendren, uh, Herndon, pardon me, Trevor McFedries. I hope I said that right. Cooper, Turley, DJ Drama, and rapper 21 Savage. Sound was a co-founded by David Greenstein, who is the son of Sirius XM president Scott Greenstein, and who got a job at Atlantic Records as a teen and later worked at Pandora. His music industry experience led him to the same conclusion as many others. The streaming-based music economy is broken, especially for artists who are not already famous. But unlike many critics, Greenstein doesn't place the blame for the situation on record labels and companies like Spotify. So many artists and their stories and songs go unrecognized. It's because the discovery method is broken, he says, explaining that the streaming model treats everyone alike, paying fractions of a penny when a song is played. The arrangement, he points out, doesn't allow fans to pay more for, artist, for new artists they are passionate about or and nor does it let artists build relationships with their fans. While a streaming service might let a performer know they have a cluster of listeners in a given city, it doesn't provide a way for them to identify or interact with them. Now, maybe that's because people don't want to be directly related? I don't know. The solution, Greenstein believes, is tapping into new tools offered by Web3, in particular NFTs, to create a new social and economic paradigm in the music industry. Yeah, Sound lets musician yeah, that's in this kind of neat idea. Um, Soundless musicians create batches of 25 NFTs for the sounds that, for the songs they release. The NFTs, which sell for 0.1 ETH, $400, pretty expensive in my opinion, um, come with the right, I should do it on Raven, damn it, uh, with the right to inscribe a comment from a certain portion of the song while the artist designates one NFT each in each batch as a golden egg that provides additional rewards. Meanwhile, Sound is also creating forums called listening parties where musicians and their fans convene for the NFT experience. 
According to the company, it only took a few minutes to generate 21 million streams worth of revenue for the seven artists Sound invited to the platform. Sound expects to bring on more and many more in the coming months. For Greenstein, all of this is a way to create a more intimate way for fans to discover and celebrate musicians. He points out that fans are much more likely to buy a singer's t-shirt at a concert, which is an emotional experience, than on a website. Sound is seeking to replicate that emotional concert experience by making the release of a musician's new song an event in which fans can participate. As for the NFTs, buyers can sell them, uh, but doing so means losing one, uh, losing the right to be one of the 25 people who can comment on the blockchain, a privilege that is meant to serve as a status symbol and a way for someone to demonstrate their, they liked the band early on. First, sorry. <laughs> I just know that's, you know, someone's gonna write first as their comment. <laughs> Discovering Billie Eilish is a high status position, says Greenstein. The next Billie Eilish will emerge off Web3 in the next six months, and people are determined to find them. Sound, which is aimed primarily at musicians who are yet to be discovered, is hardly the only crypto-based music platform. There is also Audius, a blockchain-powered decentralized streaming service, and Royal, founded by DJ Threelau, uh, which is aimed at primarily aimed primarily at bigger acts and offers a way for fans to fund musicians and receive a portion of future royalties through NFTs. So this concept, I, I, I think it's his plug to say, you know, this is the next big thing and he's probably not wrong. Um, but uh, it is kind of fascinating to see how this is shifting and how people are developing the new concept, how this can work. Um, yeah, it, it was a comment, was it uh, like, I totally saw, no, it was, it was, um, uh, oh, Meta not Meta oh, Corn. Corn played uh, uh, like a, a dive bar in Bakersfield, where they're technically from, although they do hail, hail from Los Angeles. Um, they Their lead singer is from Bakersfield, which is where I grew up. And, and they did come back and do a very, very small venue of like 50 people um, there. And it was really kind of neat to see them because, you know, I, I knew them sort of. They, were, they went to high school near, near where I lived. And it was just like, oh, this is so, you know, it's intimate, even though it's corn, right? It's a very loud, uh, you know, metal band. But... Um, how do I prove that? That happened in like 1995 when uh, obviously anybody knew them and it was, you know, the very beginning. And I was like, I could claim that all I want, but was it, at least it was on the blockchain. You could say, oh yeah, well, they're just a proof physically out there for everyone to see. I was there. That was me, you know. Mm -hmm. At my house, I hold, sell your position. I, I, I went to see this amazing artist, you know, uh, before they were famous. Well, like I was saying, in the, in the last news article that Using Web3 is probably the best the best decision that musicians can make and artists can make and, and movie producers, can, directors can make. And you can prove it's yours and it's out there for everyone to see. Exactly. So. Yeah. All right. Next news article written by Jeff Benson. Bitcoin stocks bounce back after Fed's signal interest rate hikes. Hmm. Huh. Look at that. Mm, Bitcoin. The era of easy money may soon be coming to an end in the U.S. and markets are, excite, are excited. The Federal Reserve uh, indicated today it would start phasing out its pandemic stimulus program in which it bought bonds to increase the monetary supply quicker than it had planned. The Fed also said it plans to raise interest, which now hovers around near 0% at at least three times in 2022. The moves are... By the way... How, how did... How did it hover in the future? <laughs> so, so you can actually do future predictions and see where, where things are going, which is actually pretty dang bad, isn't it? Or, is way, it, but, or is it how did the interest how did the interest rates hover around that when in twenty twenty two? I think that's a misprint. Oh, uh, then so. twenty twenty one, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're saying they can't predict the future? <laughs> uh, no. They oh, can man. sort of in the sense of they can make rules that make people do things in the future, so they can. Away. I'm going to buy my broken bag. <laughs> the moves are aimed at easing inflation, easing inflation that's running well past the central bank's long-term 2% target, but they also are having an effect on the short-term run as stock prices rise. Crypto prices also popped uh, popped on the news. Bitcoin traveled from below 47000 to nearly 49.5 in the span of a few hours, with uh, while Ethereum ascended from, uh, from below 3700 
Early Wednesday, back above 4,000. While the excitement has faded in the hours since the announcement, BTC and ETH are still in the green over the last 24 hours, as the total crypto market cap increased by more than 4%. Equities in crypto markets had been hanging on the edge of their seats this week, waiting for the Fed's decision on whether to increase interest rates to combat rising inflation. The consumer price index, the most common measures of the inflation, rose by 6.8% in November. That means goods and services such as groceries, gas, and electricity have increased by nearly 7% in just one year. Jesus, that's high. The highest rate since 1982. I wasn't even around then. <laughs> I Some... was, but I don't remember it much. <laughs> Some of that is to be expected. The coronavirus pandemic put a chill on, on consumer activity in the early two, uh, in early 2020 that the federal government then compensated for with stimulus checks and bond buying. Uh, there's just there's just more money floating around. But by raising interest rates, the Fed makes it more expensive for financial institutions to borrow money, which is ultimately passed on to consumers in the form of higher credit card rates and home loans. Americans will thus have less available to spend, theoretically cooling off the economy and bringing down inflation. Fed bond purchase adds to the effect. Last month, the central bank cut bonds purchased by $15 million a month. After today's meeting, the current $90 billion in bond purchase will decrease by $30 billion a month. All, all, of, this both do, all of this both does and doesn't have an effect on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. While Bitcoin OGs see inflation as an advertisement for deflationary assets, only 21 million coins will ever be minted, the crypto assets have been increasingly moving in tandem with stock markets as far as institutional investors get on board. And while you might think that stocks would be down on the prospects of cooling economy, far from it. The S&P 500 gained 1.6% and the Nasdaq surged 2.2% after enduring two straight days of losses. It's good to, to set the market straight. I mean, the, the whole point was making these things so cheap was to get people to, to you know, look, we need you to spend money. So we're going to make interest rates ridiculously low. So they're li literally giving money away. Just here, please take it. Please take it. Please take it. Mm -hmm. We need you to, to do things with this money. That's the reason money has been so out there and so much. Be, but it's funny because it, it kind of worked. I mean, that's what the Fed does is they lower interest rates until people can actually get back on their feet. Here, take some free money. Go do something with it. Build something. Give people jobs. So no more free money to buy Bitcoin? Well, this is the one, I don't remember who said it, I was watching a YouTube video recently and somebody was saying that they, people were ridiculously flush with cash and something, tons of people just weren't working. Some of them obviously afraid of COVID, but a lot of them are just like, hey, if the government's going to pay me more to stay home, I'm mm -hmm. not going to go to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually had a friend, I, I'm not going to say who his name is, but he's a he's a big fan of Dynamo. Um, and he, uh, he was getting paid more from the, the Fed to stay home. I was, I was jealous because here in California where everything costs more, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. so, continuing on with, uh, let's see here. Andres, Andresen Horowitz, first female general partner, Katie Hahn, leaving to start crypto fund. Go women in crypto. Woo Katie Hahn, uh, this is uh, not written by a female author. It's written by John Jeff, uh, Jeff John Roberts. <laughs> okay. Katie Hahn has cut a broad swath into the crypto world, first learning about Bitcoin as a federal prosecutor before joining the board on Coinbase, then Andreessen Horowitz, A16Z, as crypto investment giant's first female partner. Now she's heading out on her own. On Wednesday, Hahn announced she's leaving A16Z next year uh, to start her own investment fund focused on crypto and Web3. Han has yet to share what the new firm will be called, but Axial reports that A16Zs uh, and its individual partners will be among its investors. I guess they think it's a good idea. I, I know what it was. Uh, Kevin O'Leary said that he had been divesting his his uh, investments away from just general investments and putting them into women-run businesses because the his his adage was, if you want something done, give it to a busy mother. Nice. True that well, one. <laughs> yes. Uh, Han has become one of the most influential figures in crypto due to her biography, which includes a clerkship at the Supreme Court, as well as her groundbreaking role as one of two general partners to lead the crypto, the, pardon me, the country's first crypto focused venture funds at A160 in 2017. During her time, A160 Han at 
this place rather, on lead deals to back the music NFT service Royal and storage service Arweave and the giant NFT platform OpenSea. Han has also been skillfully skillful at cultivating the media, earning a series of flattering roles in mainstream publications like New York Times and Fortune. She first encountered crypto as a federal prosecutor in San Francisco, where her former boss asked her to file criminal charges against Bitcoin, an assignment that obviously proved futile. But Han would go on to play a key role in bringing charges against corrupt law enforcement officials who stole Bitcoin from the drug marketplace Silk Road and against websites that use BDC for money laundering. During the course of her, uh, of her law enforcement investigations, she came to know the Coinbase founders, Brian Armstrong and Fred uh, Ersum, earning, uh, pardon me, learning that the crypto world was much broader than criminal enterprises. She has remained close with Armstrong, who told Axios, Katie is a very special leader in the crypto community who has been an invaluable part of the Coinbase team as we've grown. Founders starting out in crypto will benefit from having her in their corner. Yeah, so. we need more women in crypto for sure. That's good, man. I congratulate her. I applaud her for, for venturing out. Good. We need a lot more women in crypto. Oh yeah, um, I I wouldn't have to take a quick break and ask you, Lisa. Um, what do you think is maybe not the only, but one of the biggest limiters that's keeping women out of crypto, or just isn't getting them interested in it most? Um. Well, I think one of the biggest things is just like a lot of women don't know about it, right? So they don't know, which is just flabbergasting to me because. As a woman who is married and has a family, I'm the one that primarily deals with the financing. So, of course, I would think other women would be more open to crypto. But I think a lot of it comes down to men dominating the conversation and not giving us a chance. Yep, as you said, <laughs> per per your pursuer in the in the Twitter space. Um, yeah, I, I, we just need to get more out there. I know my wife's not totally into it, but she's not interested in finance, so that's probably part of it. I do the finance between, you know, in the family, but um, I, I think you're right about that. We need we need more exposure, no pun intended. Um, we need to get more people interested by leading them into why it's good. So, perfect. All right, next news article written by Andrew Hayward. Michael Jordan jumps into Web3 via Solana app for athletes. Six-time NBA champion and Chicago Bulls legend Michael Jordan is the latest uh, celebrity to see potential in how crypto and Web3 technology can connect athletes and entertainers with fans. Today, Jordan revealed plans to launch a fan engagement app platform built on Solana. The platform, Air, is designed to link professional athletes with their most ardent supporters. It will feature an air token minted on the Solana blockchain and will showcase NFT assets along with community building features that let fans join an athlete's limited capacity huddle for exclusive access and benefits. Parent company Air Incorporated has been co-founded by Michael and his son Jeffrey Jordan and it has raised $10 million in seed funding in, yeah, seed funding to launch culturally inspired consumer brands rooted in tech and entertainment per release. Jeffrey Jordan will co-lead the firm alongside former Nike brand manager Jerome Smith and marketing consultant Daniel George. The Air platform is set to launch in 2022. Thrive Capital led the $10 million round, uh, which also featured participation by Solana Ventures, Reddit co-founder and 776 founder uh, Alexis oh Ohanian. Current Bulls players Lonzo Ball and New York Knicks Executive Vice President William Wesley. Wesley. Air is the latest example of burgeoning social tokens and fan engagements movements developing in the crypto space. Platforms like Rally and Roll let athletes, entertainers, artists, and influencers alike mint their own crypto tokens, which fans can purchase to support them, earn access to exclusive perks, and potentially benefit, uh, benefit should their star rise even further. Notable colleague, uh, college athletes like uh, Kayvon, oof, the 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 Oh, jeez, Thibodeau. 
Thibaud Thibodeau Thibodeau sorry a and Jalen Clark have launched their own creator tokens on rally in recent months for example meanwhile NBA player Spencer Dinwid Dinwiddie who once tokenized his league contract to sell to, su to supporters raised 7.5 million dollars in July to launch his own social token and engagement app called Galaxy this isn't Michael Jordan's first move into crypto space either. He took part in the NBA Top Shots Maker Dapper Labs $305 million funding round in March and then participated in November's $150 million uh, Series C round for Mythical Games, a, a maker of crypto games infrastructure. Solana is a blockchain network that rose significantly in value and uh, prominence over the course of the year, jumping from a price of less than $2 per token in January 1st to a peak of nearly $206 in November. Currently, the price sits at $166 per coin gecko, while competing for Ethereum is currently the, the leading network uh, network for things like NFTs, unique tokens that act like digital receipts, D excuse me, DeFi products, peer-to-peer -peer lending and trading, and other decentralized applications. Solana is billed as a faster, cheaper, and more energy-efficient alternative. The network has faced stability challenges, however, including going down for more than 17 hours in September. And is that proof-of-work problem? Oh, wait, this doesn't do proof-of-work. My bad. Solana is all proof-of-stake. Proof-of-stake. Centralized. Actually, yeah. Centralized. No, it's not. Is it? Yeah. No, is it? I thought it was. Maybe it is. I don't I know. It was, it was a bunch of yeah, companies. A, yeah. yeah, it's... Yeah, it's centralized. Okay. You heard it here first. No. <laughs> if you probably already knew it. All right. Thank you, Cryptilisa. Well, congrats, Jordan, the Jordan fam. Should have yep. used Ravencoin. I I know it would it would <laughs> it would put me on the wrong side of the fence of all the people who are Chicago Bulls fans, my brother being one of them, but I was never I was a Lakers fan. So my brother and I warred about this all the time during the 90s and 80s when they were, you know, Lakers versus Bulls. Uh, I was a Bulls all the case. ways, man. In, in school, I was wearing my Chicago Bulls hat. Oh, yeah. That was so cool, man. Yeah. Well, cool I played days. basketball in, in <laughs> elementary school, and I played the same role that, that uh, Irving Johnson, Magic Johnson, played. So um, because of that, I was much more of a fan of his. So. Mm -hmm. They were also an L.A. team, and we lived in L.A., so... Nah. <laughs> Um, my brother just likes to contradict me. We're always at war with each other. Anyways, continuing on with political news from Andrew Asmikov. Elizabeth Warren, used to be a fan of hers, DeFi is one of the shadiest parts of crypto. She's a woman. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she's always right. <laughs> I didn't uh, vote for Hillary. Uh, <laughs> okay, go ahead. Massachusetts Democrat Senator Elizabeth Warren has again stepped into the limelight for her comments about the fast-growing sector of decentralized finance and the role of stabilized of stable coins in this niche. Speaking at a Senate committee on banking, housing, and urban affairs hearing on Tuesday, Warren described stable coins as the lifeblood of the DeFi ecosystem, which is mostly right, where they are used to uh, where they're used to trade. Uh, between different coins and as well as lend and borrow money outside the regulated banking system. Stable coins are cryptocurrencies that claim to be pegged one-to-one -one fiat currencies like US dollar, meaning that unlike Bitcoin or many other cryptocurrencies in the market, their prices are supposed to remain steady, which they do for the most part. Warren also stated that stable coins pose risk to consumers and the economy because they are propping up one of the shadiest parts of the crypto world, DeFi, where consumers are least protected from getting scammed. She's not wrong about that. But as they say, at your own risk. According to Warren, DeFi is where the regulation is effectively absent. And no surprise, it's where the scammers and the cheats and the swindlers mix among part-time investors and first-time crypto traders. Yeah, she's, she's not wrong. Our regulators need to get serious about clamping down before it's too late. Uh, and I disagree with her thoroughly there because it's not about regulation, it's about you've been smart with your money. At the same time, Warren's fellow party member, Senator Sherrod Brown, label it, labeled stablecoins as magic money, saying that they are neither decentralized nor transparent. If you put your money in stablecoins, there's no guarantee you're going to get it back, Warren, the Ohio senator. He's not wrong there either. 
Senator Warren's latest comments on DeFi and stablecoins are just the latest episode in her ongoing criticism of larger crypto industry. In July, Warren sent a letter to the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen asking for greater oversight of the crypto industry. All the warning signs are flashing, Warren said at the time. The hype, volatility, the wild claims that turn out to be false. As the crypto market grows, so do the risks of our, stabi our financial stability and our co economy. Earlier this month, pretty much in line with a popular climate change narrative, she also took aim at New York-based Bitcoin mining firm Green Ridge Generation, Green, pardon, Greenwich Generation, raising concerns about its impact on the environment. Prior to that, in an interview with CNBC, Warren stated that one of the easiest and the least disruptive things we can do to fight climate, cli uh, climate crisis is to crack down on environmentally wasteful cryptocurrencies. Again, I don't disagree with her. I just not necessarily sure that, she, that trying to gr wrap one's hands around DeFi is going to be one easy at all mm -hmm. and two practical. And the reason I said is because it's not so much that DeFi is, uh, it is wildly speculative I think the thing that they should do is prepare people for what it is and not just try to regulate it. Like, look, well, here's all the information you need to know about what you should and shouldn't be doing here. Now it is at your own risk that you do this, but we're not going to protect you. It's your risk. You need to play as you can. Uh, I would say, I know I'm saying this is not financial advice, but I would go so far as to say the only financial advice I could give that I think is good and helpful to anyone investing in the first time is never play with more than 10% of your capital. I know that that is mm -hmm. direct financial advice. And the reason I say that is because it is extremely conservative to do that. 10% of everything you own, let's say you only have $100 to your name. You only pay with $10. I think you, you can probably afford to lose $10 out of $100. If, if, if you have you know $1,000 in cash, then you can play with $100. Okay. But the problem is people are like, well, I've got $1,000, so I'm playing with that $1,000. I am like, well, if you lose that $1,000 or you can't get it back quickly, you're not going to be able to pay rent or mortgage or your car payment or something else that you need to pay. So why would you do that? And for those kind of people who don't have very much money in cash, I say, check out Yada. They are not a sponsor, but they are someone that is effectively a sponsor for us, a, a, a referral link. Um, and... You can play the lottery all you like and never lose any of your money. So, <clears throat> well, Speaking of Yada, we don't actually have a link here. Oh, we, we, got, we have to add a link oh. to Yada now. Okay, there you go. But another thing that's like Yada is pull together, similar concept. Mm -hmm. it's, it actually is crypto-based. Um, but the whole, the whole point therein is just, you know, if you want to play with money and you want to, you know, risk it yada is a good way to doing it because it's, it's a lottery but it's lossless so mm -hmm. you can do yada you can do yada all day long and never lose any money well let's see what kind of bill she passes it, it all depends on how, how it's written and what's going on all right next i week. hope it goes for more for information instead of just trying to clamp down physically on on DeFi. yep next news written by scott chaplina nba star kevin durant goes crypto with coinbase deal NBA star Kevin Durant has inked a fresh deal with crypto exchange Coinbase to appear as a face of the brand per Bloomberg. In turn, Coinbase will run cryptocurrency ads and sponsored content on Boardroom, Durant's sports website, and donate to Durant's charitable foundation to support the youth. Kevin does very, very few brand deals, and that was by design. Rich Kleeman, Durant's manager, told Bloomberg, they're, they're this new model of brand partners for us where they do integrate in all different parts of our business. He, he added, Durant is similarly excited about the new deal. Even when I was younger, I was always curious about the business side of things and I, and always trying to learn from people I've gotten to meet along the way. Basketball was always number one for me, but it was clear that there was a lot more that I could accomplish if I had the right team around me. Durant was an early Coinbase investor in 2017 through 30, 35 ventures his investment fund with Kleeman, but his new deal makes him a public ambassador. In November, he and Kleeman launched a SPAC, special purpose acquisition company called Infinite Acquisitions Corp. With one eye on the crypto industry, the SPAC is a collaboration between 35 Ventures, Durant's investment firm, and investment and banking firm Lion, Lion Tree. In a recent infinite, uh, in infinite SEC filing, infinite, infinite SEC filing, a broad scope of acquisitions targets range from the sports industries, health and wellness, 
e-commerce, food, technology, and supply industry. The crypto industry was uh, was a particular particular highlight in the filing. These technologies make the internet ownable, uh, providing new ways to reward and compensate creators for the work, allowing unbound creativity. The filing reads, "Perfect. We'll leave that there." Yeah, it's good to see someone uh, stepping up. It's gonna be interesting with Durant. You know how Crypto.com put their name on the on the uh, Lakers building. Mm. Uh, was it Lakers? No. Um, mm. Which one was it? I don't watch sports. Is it the Lakers? Uh, I, know. I know I don't watch them either, but um, I'm just aware of the, this thing that they did. You know, they, put, they basically had seven hundred billion dollars to put their name on a building for ten years, uh, but it's getting to sports, and so of course here's Coinbase trying to do the same thing with Kevin Durant. Ah, um, I see what you're saying. And I, yeah, they're they're just they're they know what they're the audience they're trying to glom onto. And I'm kind of curious what the good. numbers look like. How much do you think they think he got paid? Uh, several million. Right, right, right. <laughs> This news Probably article, I'm, this news article, I'm really excited, man. I want you to read this because I, I did get a little. Uh, uh, I saw this all over Twitter, man. So go ahead. Oh, this uh, crypto firm uh, Leiden or Leiden? Leiden. Leiden. Okay, so crypto firm Leiden raises 70 million, not really anything, for Bitcoin-backed mortgages. Andrew Asmakoff writes, Leiden, a Toronto-based crypto firm, has announced a 70 million dollar raise in a Series B funding round led by Dan Tapieros. 10T Holdings. Fresh fin- financing brings Leiden's market value to half a trillion, no, half, right, half a billion dollars, my bad. Golden Tree Asset Management, Raptor Group, and FG Labs are among the first, uh, among the firm's new backers and joining the existing investors such as White Star Capital, Kingsway Capital, Coinbase Ventures, Alan Howard, Howard uh, Parafi Capital, uh, oh man, Susquehanna, uh, private equity investments. So lots of people involved in this backing. Leiden said it would use the fresh capital to support growth, specifically plans to build what it claims to be the world's first Bitcoin-backed mortgage product. Buy your house with Bitcoin. Most people hold that, uh, that hold extensive wealth in Bitcoin still can't utilize their assets to qualify a mortgage at the bank, said Adam Reeds, Leiden co-founder and CEO. Our clients want to diversify their portfolio in order to protect their wealth and then utilize that wealth for instances such as purchasing a home, but one should not come at the expense of the other. Bitcoin, the market's largest cryptocurrency, is currently trading hands around you know, about $48,000 or 30% down from its all-time high of nearly 70000 recorded on November 10th. Leaving the mainstream path. According to Reeds, the new Bitcoin based mortgage offering will provide access to key financial products for those who choose to invest outside the mainstream of legacy banks, like everyone in crypto is doing. Ledin said the product is slated to become available to clients in the US and Canada early next year. The company is targeting over $100 million in Bitcoin backed mortgage originations by the end of Q1 2022, so basically by March. Ledin's business model. Uh, is to is a true win-win for investors b- borrowing and uh, alike. Pardon me. Who keeps coming in and out of the uh, <laughs> channel? Um, starting to stop. Uh, as it gives investors the ability to earn strong returns on their digital asset investments while providing great interest rates to borrowers, added Dan Tapirio, who is now joining Leiden's board of directors. In May, Leiden raised uh, $30 million in a Series A round round led by London-based investment firm Kingsway Capital. According to the company, it's operating in 127 countries with 44% of its loan clients based out of Latin America, where where it hopes to expand with help of the latest fundraise. Leiden claims to have more than $1.7 billion in in client assets, an impressive 4,000% increase from Q3 2020, which was not that long ago. We'll be looking to boost the fi- this figure with Bitcoin mortgages too. Oh, it's, it's interesting to see that. I, I do remember, gosh, what was it? 2014 or 2015, somebody bought a house in Tahoe mm. with just Bitcoin. Yeah. And that was when Bitcoin was worth a lot less than it is today. Mm-hmm. 100, <laughs> yep. It's like 10,000, oh. I think, at the time. Uh, there are many, many hundreds, of, if not thousands, of, of Bitcoin were used to buy a multi-million dollar home in Tahoe. 
of course that person immediately divested it back into cash but at the same time it's like dude you should have kept it mm -hmm. you should have kept it <laughs> imagine <laughs> you would have been a billionaire sure. now <laughs> yeah so but nobody had a crystal ball. None of us knew to keep all of our Ethereum or all of our Litecoin or all of our Dogecoin mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. All right. Let's continue on. And let's see. The next one is written by Tim Haki. Balancer launches boosted pools on Aave to improve DeFi yields. Balancer Labs today announced the launch of boosted pools on DeFi protocol. Uh, boosted more than $13.4 billion in total assets, excluding assets being borrowed. Aave's lenders earn interest by locking up their crypto in liquidity pools, and borrowing, borrowers can take out loans by providing crypto as collateral. The project is also responsible for developing flash loans. For its part, Balancer doubles as a decentralized exchange and sort of a uh, sort of DIY crypto index fund provider, with users earning fees for creating attractive pools of liquidity for speculators. Now, the two are partnering up to lift yields across both projects. Only around 10% of the liquidity deposited into an automated market maker, AMM, like Balancer, is utilized by the tra traders since trade size tends to be much smaller than the money deposited into the pool to avoid slippage. Thanks to Balancer's new boosted pool platform, users can deposit a given percentage of unused liquidity in AMM pools onto lending protocols like Aave where it earns an additional yield typically to increase capital efficiency, the ratio between spending and growth. AMM liquidity pools hold Aave DAI, a DAI uh, an interest-bearing token on Ethereum that can be redeemed for DAI at 1 to 1 exchange rate. The a DAI token is minted on deposit and burned once redeemed, but wrapping tokens is a complicated process that can be too costly to, to do during a trade. Aave Boosted Pools solves this problem by outsourcing the wrap, wrapping and unwrapping process by uh, to, ooh, what is it? RB, arbitrage. Arbitra arbitrageurs. Arbitrageurs? Yeah, people who are doing arbitration, so. Arbitrageurs, okay, who are incentivized to do it. Bal uh, Balancer first announced their collaboration back in February this year when CEO and founder Fernando Martinelli wrote a blog post about an upcoming Balancer V2 asset manager. Martinelli, Martinelli, eh, Martinelli, Martinelli said in a statement today that the collaboration with Aave as the first iteration of the Boosted Pools launched a natural fit and solidifies their place in the Balancer ecosystem. There are various levels of Boosted Pools innovations that that lead to concrete results deeply Deeper liquidity, more efficient integrations for liquidity, and higher yields. Hmm. That sounds like a win-win to me. Yeah, no, I think it's actually kind of fascinating. It's the a off-chain or outside the normal transaction transaction to wrap and unwrap tokens on another uh, chain uh, that you know that still satisfies the transaction. And yes. To actually add the liquidity and then make a transaction is a complicated process. I know I've done it. I guess you could do it faster if you knew what you're doing, but it's still like it's not something you want to have to do in order to make a transaction, unless you could do it fast, like what they're suggesting here. I think that's a kind of a neat concept. Just trying to, you know, it's like if you had to buy something in euros and you had to buy it in euros, um, but all you had was US dollars and you wanted US dollars when you were done or maybe the other person did doing, but like, okay, we have to exchange the euros, buy the thing, and then, you know, whatever else needs to be done with that, exchange back to US dollars again. And it's like, uh, why can't we just buy in US dollars? Because you know, they want your euros. So that's a good shorter analysis to what we're, ana analogy to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Continuing on with DeFi chains, Fort Channing hard fork makes decentralized assets accessible to millions by... <gasps> Is this a female author? No, I was kidding. There's plenty of female authors. Uh, <laughs> Allie Grace Garnett. Historically, trading on the stock market has only been an option available to relatively few privileged investors, those with millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars and not a lot of time or too much time on their hands. The expense involved in geographical restrictions on trading limit uh, the opportunities to get involved for the vast swaths of global population. Now, Bitcoin-based decentralized finance DeFi platform DeFi Chain is opening up the opportunity to create decentralized assets that perform similarly to stocks to potentially millions of users. DeFi, what I'm really hoping this leads to is being able to trade stocks after hours. DeFi Chain, 
Octane 14 hard fork launched in November 15th enabled anyone to create a decentralized asset by issuing tokens that change in value in tandem with other assets such as Fortune 500 stocks. The hard fork opens up the whole world to financial capabilities for everybody, said Yuzin Shua, that's right, Yuzin Shua, co-founder of DeFi Chain. Users need only a smartphone and access to the internet to get exposure to both assets and crypto. With the launch of Fort Channing Hard Fork, participants, participants on the DeFi blockchain, chain, pardon me, DeFi chain blockchain, chain, 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 can now purchase decentralized assets that track the NASDAQ traded stocks, including Alphabet, Apple, GameStop, really GameStop, Tesla, and Alibaba, as well as assets that track Exchange traded funds or ETFs such as ARK Innovation, ETF ARKK, or um, SPDR Gold Shares, GLD, and SPDR S&P 500 Trust, otherwise SPY. And here's a tweet about that. Creators of decentralized assets on DeFi can also sell fractions of tokens with no need for a broker or other intermediary because to token purchasers can be located anywhere in the world and don't require a bank. Uh, private bank account. The DeFi chain team anticipates that blockchain will uh, increase accessibility to markets for users who have to date been shut out of traditional securities markets. This is cool. This is awesome, actually. As well as trading decentralized assets, users of the Bitcoin based DeFi platform can also create their own decentralized assets, which are similar to stock market indexes in that they reflect the value of another asset, but are fully autonomous. DAOs, right? The value of decentralized assets is secured not by the traditional assets that they track, but rather by the cryptocurrencies that are deposited into vaults. The vaults have to be collateralized 100% by DeFi, or DFI, that is, DeFi chain's native currency. Alternatively, the collateral can be also split up into 50% DeFi and 50% in an established cryptocurrency. These are, right? This is just the intro. Vaults are using buying power to mint the stock or other asset a token tracks. These tokens can be used in liquidity mining on DeFi chain, where liquidity providers are rewarded in DeFi for providing liquidity in forms of stable coins and tokenized assets or cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is pretty much what DeFi is anyways. The return that liquidity providers can earn vary based on supplied liquidity in the pools. DeFi chain, a hard Bitcoin hard fork that launched in May 2020, enables Decentralized finance without using smart contracts. Rather than building decentralized apps or dApps on top of blockchain, it uses native programming on the consensus level to create platform capabilities. But more important than the platform's technical achievements, DeFi Chain co-founder co Dr. Julian Sop told Decrypt, is the opportunities it creates for investors. The most exciting possibility is the DeFi Chain users can combine their investments from traditional markets together with investments in the crypto world. So this is something that I think John was looking forward to with the concept of like the uh, block, uh, BTF uh, spot market ETF. Um, but in closer. general, this mm -hmm. is bringing us closer and closer to allowing people to invest, normal people to invest. And I do mean normal by people who are, don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to their name um, to invest in another form of allowing, of, of stock market access. And like I said before, I, I hope what happens with this is it leads to the possibility of being able to in, uh, buy and sell stocks that are representative tokens, not during normal business trading hours. The thing that bugs me so much is, and I, I use a, an app called Public, it's another you know exchange forum um, or exchange uh, application for stock trading. They warn me uh, here on the, on the left coast, the stock market closes at 1 p.m. right after lunch. <laughs> So they're always warning me 15 minutes before the stock market closes. Oh, by the way, the stock market is closing. And I'm like, dang it, why does that have to close at 1 o'clock in the afternoon? It's like, because yeah. it's 4 o'clock in, in Eastern time. So. Mm -hmm. All right, next new. No, it's. Oh, UK Watchdog. Okay. Uh, written by Scott Chaplina. UK Watchdog bans Coinbase, Papa John's, eToro, crypto ads. The United Kingdom Advertising Standards Authority, ASA, has banned seven cryptocurrencies-related promotions as part of the wider, wider focus on potential harmful crypto ads per the BBC. The ASA has targeted crypto pro promotions from Coinbase Europe, 
uh, eToro, Papa John's, Luno Money, uh, Exmo Exchange, Payword, and CoinBurp. All seven ads were banned for irresponsibly taking advantage of consumers' inexperience and for failing to illustrate the risk of the, of the investment, the ASA said. Baba John's, a popular pizza chain, offered free Bitcoin worth 10 euros, as well as telling customers that they would save uh, 15 euros if they spent 30 euros or more on pizza. The pizza chain also linked their Bitcoin promotions to Bitcoin Pizza Day, which marks the first time Bitcoin was ever used in a transaction to buy pizza in May 2020, 2010. Excuse me. The ASA said this promotion uh, trivialized, trivialized, uh, what was trivialized. a trivialized yeah what was a serious and potentially costly financial decision especially in the contents of the in intended audience who were likely to have limited knowledge of cryptocurrencies uh, though the pay word ad had a disclaimer its cautions were unclear thus the asa said consumers would would ought would ought would not have had the time to comprehend the relative uh, relevant information in the disclaimer if seen at all this is not the first time that the ASA has targeted the crypto industry. The ASA targeted a Loon, Luno ad in May this year, which said, if you're seeing Bitcoin on the underground, it's time to buy. The ASA considered that ban to be irresponsible. The watchdog has also taken aim at Floki Inu ads on the London underground. In November, in November the advertising watchdog, watchdog began investigating these ads, a spokesperson for the ASA said. I don't think cryptocurrency ads should be on the transportation network. They're unethical. Miles, Miles Lockwood, director uh, of complaints and investigations at the ASA, is equally, equally critical of misleading crypto ads. Consumers need to know about the risk of in, in investing in crypto assets and companies should make sure that their ads aren't misleading or socially irresponsible by taking advantage of consumers' lack of awareness around these complex and volatile products, said Lockwood. It's, I mean, they just have more strict rules, right? This is not that strange. I, I'm not saying that, that they should, shouldn't be a bit. Uh, to some degree, I, I would comment that uh, the UK may be a little bit more progressive when it comes to uh, protecting consumers. You know what they should have? In small or big letters, like right across, this, right across the image itself. This content is for entertainment, inter, entertainment purposes only. Any comment made by the host or guest is not financial advice. That's what they should have. <laughs> That's what they should have. Uh, I don't think they're going to do it. But I know that when Google does their ads, at least they put ads at the top of it. Right? They're like, this link is an ad. Yeah. <laughs> so if you click on it, someone's making money off you. Take anyway, the last continuing one. on with Avalanche, up 16%. It's up 16%? Oh, we already said that, didn't we? After network launch of USDC stablecoin. Oh, is that why it's up? Let's find out. This article by Andrew Askmanikov. Evax, the native token of Avalanche blockchain, is up 16.2% in the last 24 hours, leading the charge in reviving the markets. Woo, go Avax! The token's price began soaring on Tuesday after payments, uh, payment circle, pardon me, payments company circle announced the deployment of USD stablecoin on the Avalanche network. Evax reached an all-time high of 144.96 on November 21st, briefly entered entering the top 10 cryptocurrencies uh, by market capitalization. And of course, they've done this again. As markets tumbled, the price of the token fell to $77 earlier this week, recovering to 91.53 today, according to CoinGecko. Avalanche is a smart contracts platform designed for building decentralized applications and custom blockchains based on different use cases. I know that sounds very generic, doesn't it? The network boasts low transaction fees and fast confirmation times, making it an attractive network for all things decentralized finance. The number of users and developers has driven the total value, uh, value of locked assets, or TVL, across Avalanche-based DeFi projects to nearly $11 billion, according to data from DeFi Llama. The ecosystem's high of 13.79 billion came on December 2nd, not that long ago. Commenting on the addition of USDC to the Avalanche blockchain, Circle said that DeFi and other applications will now have access to native USDC liquidity, eliminating the need for costly token bridges and unsupported wrapped tokens. Austin-based company added the USDC liquidity should also help fuel rapid growth of an avalanche ecosystem and more businesses turn to the, uh, or rather, as more business turn to the popular stablecoin. 
Because he, he was launched in May 2018 in an effort by Circle and the crypto exchange Coinbase. With a market cap of nearly $42 billion, it is currently the industry's sixth largest digital asset and second largest stablecoin behind Tether. With the, av the addition of Avalanche, USDC is now supported on seven blockchains, including Ethereum, Algorand, Stellar, Solana, Hedera Hashgraph, and Tron. No, not Tron Black, but Tron the coin. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, there are cautious optimism of the broader crypto market has slightly rebounded from its recent losses. And actually, I, I took a screenshot of this today and posted it on the Dynamo forums. Uh, Bitcoin is up 3% over the day, trading at 48.5 while Ethereum is up 2.8%, trading at 3.88, a thousand that is, not tens of thousand. By the time of this writing, Doge is up 14% back to 0.18 or 18 cents, uh, still relishing Elon Musk's recent announcement that Tesla will accept the meme coin for merchandise payments. Why not for Teslas? No. Uh, <laughs> while other notable gainers include Elrond at 19.5%, Kadena, 15% pancake swap. Oh, thank goodness, pancake swap's coming back. 13.8% Polygon at 10% and Solana at 9%. So, thank you. I'm so glad. We, we did see that a bit at the top of the show. A lot of different people, uh, a lot of rather coins making recoveries, although I didn't talk about anything other than um, Avalanche. Dogecoin, I'm, I'm looking right now. Dogecoin is up half a percent. And uh, let's see what else is up. OKB, I think I mentioned that was up. Elrond is up 6%. And what else is up right now? Uh, helium. Helium's up. Woo! Uh, Pancake swaps up 3%. So, yeah, a lot of these top 50 coins are up. But it's a neat neat spike to see everything popping back up. You see on the very far right there on the, on the screen, pretty much everyone, with the exception of stable coins, has popped back up. A pretty st straight line, mostly. A little bit of a, uh, a snake head at the top. But that's what happened when anything fell down. It was just this drop off into oblivion. How things are trying to recover. It's all that FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, "No, wait for me." And it's like, "Well, you should just you should do the opposite: buy when it's down and sell when it's up, mm -hmm. or hold when it's up." <laughs> Hot all right. We got gotten through all the recent news. What else is there? Is there anything else? Or are we just gonna call it there? That's that's good right there. Let's call it there, man. We're... All right. Okay. Cryptonauts. Lead us out, John. <laughs> Remember, if you appreciate our content, like, subscribe, comment, and share. And hit the notification bell button. Yeah, we post every Wednesday and Sunday. Make sure you check us out on YouTube and Anchor. Uh, you want to hang out with us? We're always in Discord. And now I've been hanging out in Twitter as well. So that's uh, going to be uh, at Blockchain John or at C3 Media 2 with the number 2. Uh, and at Jabrelli, correct? Yep, Jerry, that's right. Yeah, Correct. and Twitter. at Cryptolissa, I think it's Cryptolissa. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else do we got? We got. Uh, if we do have a Patreon, you can check us out there. Uh, what do we got? It's, what is it? Five, ten, and twenty. I believe it is. Three, 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 five, and ten. Actually. Three, five, and, five ten. and ten. All right. So you can you can help us out with with Patreon if you want some extra content. Cool. All right. Uh, also, if you just want to donate, you can donate via crypto with BTC, Bitcoin, LTC, Litecoin, RVN, Ravencoin, BNB, Binance, and ETH, Ethereum, and BAT, uh, Basic Attention Token, and USDC, Stablecoin. Got to throw that in there. Also, we have a bunch of referral links below. Celsius, Coinbase, Gemini, Cash App, Binance, Probit, and, of course, the Law of the Extension app. And with that said, that's it. Back to you. Well, we appreciate everyone listening, and thank you for hanging out, uh, Cryptolissa and Spicy. Uh, we will say the end as we always do. Stack sats and hodl. Diamond hands all the way. Adios.